Hi everyone, this is Maverick Paul, the Chemistry Guru. Now in chemical bonding, when we draw a dot and cross diagram, we will now encounter scenarios where the central atom will actually expand octet or have more than 8 electrons around its valence shell. Now this is very different from what we used to learn at secondary level, where we say that all elements must obey octet rule. But for A-level chemistry, we realize that it is not really the case. Actually, a lot of other elements can have more than 8 electrons around its valence shell, so therefore they can expand octet. So in this video, we want to spend some time to discuss the concept on expansion of octet. Now let us first consider which elements can expand octet. Now, involving expansion of octet usually applies to the central atom when we are drawing the dot and cross diagram because the central atom tends to form more bonds than the surrounding atoms, so therefore they will have more electrons around the valence shell, so it is more likely that the central atom can expand octet. Now, which elements can expand octet? Actually, quite a lot of them. Atoms from period 3 and below actually can expand octet because they can make use of their energetically accessible D subshell, or sometimes we will refer to this as low-lying D subshell for bonding. So therefore, they can hold more than 8 electrons around the valence shell, and typically we say that this is the expansion of octet. Now, what this means is only period 2 elements cannot expand octet and therefore they have to obey octet rule. Because for period 2 elements, the principal quantum number is 2. So at n equals to 2, we only have 2s subshell, which can hold up to a maximum of 2 electrons, and 2p subshell, which can hold up to a maximum of 6 electrons. So the total number of electrons that a period 2 element can hold is only 8 electrons. So therefore we say that they cannot expand octet, and only period 2 elements must obey octet rule. So what this means is elements like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine cannot expand octet and recommended it is easier for us to remember which are the elements that cannot expand octet because we only have a very small number of them and in principle all the rest of the elements because it is in period 3 and beyond period 3, period 4, period 5 and so on all of them they can expand octet if necessary. So remember expansion of octet is actually the norm it is not the exception. Now at the beginning, actually, it will take some time for us to get the hang of it, especially we are very comfortable with octet rule, and we think that octet rule, it must be always obeyed. But again, at A-level chemistry, we are saying that actually only very few elements must obey octet rule. Only period 2 elements have to do that. All the rest of the elements, if they can expand octet, they would expand octet. So what we want to do next is we want to try to explain why is this the case? Because very often when schools say that I have an element which is in period 3 and beyond and they can expand octet because of the energetically accessible D subshell or the low-lying D subshell for bonding. But what does that actually mean by making use of the D subshell for bonding? So we want to understand this a little bit better. Now to understand why elements want to expand octet if possible, Let's use oxygen as an example first. Of course, oxygen it is in period 2. We know that oxygen cannot expand octet. So let's try to write out the electronic configuration for oxygen, and we see the arrangement of the electrons. Now oxygen O8, the electronic configuration will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. If we focus on the valence electrons, 2s2, 2p4. And if you look at the arrangement of the electrons using the electronic box diagram, 2s2, be something like this. 2p4 will be something like this. So if I consider the arrangement of the electrons at the valence shell or n equals to 2, what we notice is I'll have two paired electrons in 2s orbital and one of the 2p orbitals and I have two unpaired electrons in the other 2p orbitals. Now if I want to form a covalent bond then what is necessary is I need to have an electron inside one orbital and this electron it has to be unpaired so that it can overlap with another orbital with also only one electron, then it's considered as sharing of two electrons and we say that this is a covalent bond, right? So maybe if I illustrate this using an oxygen-hydrogen bond, if I consider oxygen, which is here, now if it has an orbital, and inside this orbital, what we need is I need one electron, and then what it must do in order for it to form a covalent bond is I need another element, maybe a hydrogen, and this hydrogen, because it is in period 1, it only has a 1s orbital, so the shape of the orbital will be spherical, so we draw it this way, and this hydrogen has one electron. What happens is the two orbitals will overlap and we will form something like this. We will get this oxygen, 
and the orbital will be here and then it overlaps with the orbital of hydrogen then I'll have two electrons one from oxygen and one from hydrogen that is shared between oxygen and hydrogen and we say that this is a covalent bond so what this means is in order for oxygen to form a covalent bond with something else what it will need is you will need an orbital and inside this orbital there should only be one electron or the electron that is not paired so if I look at this configuration 2s2 2b4 which are the orbitals that can be forming covalent bonds then it has to be these two orbitals that we are highlighting in blue here because this has an unpaired electron so it can be involved in orbital overlap with another orbital to form a covalent bond I have another unpaired electron here and this can be involved in covalent bonding with another atom so in this case we will expect oxygen to be only capable of forming two covalent bonds now how about these two paired electrons because these two paired electrons are not involved in bonding so we say that it is a lone pair so we would expect since oxygen has two unpaired electrons then it can form two covalent bonds and two lone pairs so if I consider water as an example I form one OH bond a second OH bond and this oxygen has two lone pair or two electron pair that is not involved in bonding and I go and count the total number of electrons around oxygen I will have eight electrons so therefore oxygen is octet of course this is not surprising this is what that we expect from oxygen but keep in mind in this case oxygen has two lone pair and two unpaired electrons so therefore it can only form two covalent bonds now next how about sulfur now sulfur is the element that is directly below oxygen and it is in period 3 so the electronic configuration for sulfur will be something like this sulfur 16 it will be 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p4 again if we focus on the valence electron 3s2 3p4 so 3s2 will be something like this 3p4 will be something like this of course this looks very similar to the arrangement that we encountered earlier for oxygen not surprising because they have the same number of valence electrons but what is interesting that is different for sulfur is in addition to the S subshell and the P subshell now sulfur has the D subshell which is available and the energy difference between the 3P and 3D subshell it is very small because essentially they are different subshells but in the same principal quantum number so they should be very close to each other and the energy difference between 3S, 3P and 3D subshell should be relatively small so the energy required for excitation a very small amount of energy is required now this idea involving excitation we will talk about it soon enough but let us consider sulfur without excitation first now if I look at the electronic configuration for sulfur 3s2 3p4 then the number of unpaired electron it has is two unpaired electrons and I have two electron pairs so what it can do is it can form two covalent bonds and two lone pairs just like oxygen in water so therefore this sulfur is expected to be octane we have an example h2s which is very similar to h2o water so if sulfur just make use of whatever configuration that it has in the ground state and try to form bonds then we will expect sulfur to be octane just like oxygen but sulfur interestingly can do more why is it the case is because this 3d subshell it is available it is like an empty room that you can put the electron in so what sulfur can do is it can actually separate its electron pair and put one of these electron that I've highlighted in green here I put this electron and I promote this electron and put it into a 3D subshell because 3D subshell it is in a higher energy level than 3P subshell so when I put the electron from a more stable subshell and I put it here then we need to supply energy to this so we're making the configuration slightly less stable and this process is called excitation I'm trying to put this electron from a stable state to a less stable state so I'm exciting the particular electron so therefore this process is considered as excitation and what is interesting based on the outcome of this excitation the electronic configuration will now look something like this now 3s2 will be untouched what happens is once I put the electron from 3p to 3d then I'll have four unpaired electrons so if I go and compare one two three four unpaired electrons and I compare this against the previous configuration the previous configuration because sulfur has only two unpaired electron so it can only form two covalent bonds but in this case because it has four unpaired electrons 
So the total number of covalent bonds that this sulfur can form now will be four covalent bonds because each of these unpaired electron can be used to form a covalent bond with another atom. Now, if I can form four covalent bonds and I still have this lone pair, correct? So if I go and consider the total number of electrons that this sulfur will have around its valence shell, I'll have eight electrons that comes from the covalent bonds and I have two electrons that comes from the lone pair. Altogether, I'll have 10 electrons. Now, this is what we call expansion of octet because sulfur now has more than eight electrons around its valence shell. Now, would sulfur like to expand octet? Sulfur actually, if it can, it would. Why is it the case is because of the number of bonds I can form from expansion of octet. Now we know that when we form a covalent bond, energy is released, right? Because bond formation, it is exothermic, energy is released. So the more covalent bonds you can form, the more energy you can release. So therefore the overall outcome or the overall configuration will be more stable. So if sulfur is forming two covalent bonds, then it will release a certain amount of energy and the final outcome will have a certain stability. But if it can form four covalent bonds, then it will release even more energy and the outcome will be even more stable. So actually this becomes the driving force for expansion of octet. How do we expand octet is I do excitation. I start to unpair electron and I separate this electron and I put this electron into another space or another orbital that is readily available. Now remember, we just treat this 3D subshell as a space or a room for you to unpair electrons and you separate all these electrons. So if I can put this electron into a separate room or a separate orbital and I have more unpaired electrons, so I can form more covalent bonds, so the outcome will be more stable. So this is the driving force or this is the motivation for species to expand octet. The more bonds I can form, the more stable I will become. Now, sulfur actually can do more, correct? Because you notice I still have one electron pair that I can still unpair. So what sulfur can do is it can take this electron, same thing, spend a little bit of energy, promote this electron, and then put it into the 3D subshell. So I unpair electrons and I have more unpaired electrons, so therefore I can form more bonds. So the outcome will be something like this. Once I unpair this electron, then the electronic configuration will be one spin up, two spin up, three, four, five, six. So the total number of unpaired electrons that I have now will be six unpaired electrons. So what is the total number of covalent bonds that sulfur now can form? Now it can form six covalent bonds, which will give it a total of 12 electrons. So of course, this is expansion of octane. But the more important idea is we want to appreciate why would sulfur want to expand octet? So does it prefer octet or does it prefer expansion of octet? Sulfur prefers expansion of octet because if it can form more bonds, the overall outcome will be more stable. So this idea it is particularly important because when we transit from octet rule to expansion of octet, some of us have this idea that octet rule is more important because we are more comfortable or we are more familiar with octet rule. So we want to understand that elements that is in period three and below, they have the capacity to unpair electrons and have more unpaired electrons. So therefore they can form more covalent bonds and become more stable. So they will gladly expand octet if they have the opportunity to. So remember, expansion of octet, it is the norm. Only octet rule is the exception. Only period two elements, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine cannot expand octet. Now, of course, this brings us back to period two elements. If I just unpair electrons and I have more unpair electrons, so therefore I can form more bonds and become more stable. Why wouldn't period two elements just unpair electrons and just put the electron to the next available orbital? Why wouldn't period two elements do that? Now, period two elements, it is not capable of doing that. So therefore it is not capable of expanding our tank. It is because the energy difference between the 2P and the 3S subshell it is too big for excitation. That means back to oxygen. As an example, oxygen configuration is 2s2, 2b4. It'll be something like this. Now let's say oxygen wants to form more bonds. So what you have to do is, I have more unpaired electrons. So I'll try to take this electron and I try to put it into the next available orbital, which is in 3s subshell. Now the issue is this, because the electron here, it is in 2p. 
which is at the second principal quantum shell. Then the next available state will be in 3s, which is the next principal quantum shell. And for n equals to 2 versus n equals to 3, the energy difference it is too big, or the difference in the distance from the nucleus it is too large. So it involves too much energy for me to take this electron and promote it to the next principal quantum number or the next principal quantum state. So for period 2 elements, they are not capable of putting their electron from n equals to 2 and promote it to n equals to 3. So therefore, they cannot ampere electrons and they cannot form more bonds. So period 2 elements are stuck with octet rule and they cannot expand octet. Alright, so that was the discussion involving the expansion of octet. Hopefully, with this discussion, we can better appreciate why elements can expand octet and would prefer to expand octet as compared to staying with being octet. So if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me a thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.